This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. In Alaska, smaller isolated villages are banning travel to and from their communities to slow the spread of COVID-19. This week, two island communities, predominantly Alaska Native, banned travel. In the village of Cake, population 600, Mayor Lloyd Davis told residents through Facebook nobody could come or go for the next two weeks. We're at a critical point right now um, as far as um, this COVID-19 and how fast it's progressing. And we as a community need to do anything in our power to keep this virus from uh, coming into our town. In Huna, population 800, city manager Davis Gray Jr. says people can leave, but they cannot come back until at least mid-April or longer. There are those folks that are coming back from trips out of Oregon that can't come back. Uh, They called in concerned, but we told them they can't come home. (laughs) Alaska Municipal League has been tracking travel bans across the state. Executive Director Nils Andresen says it's important for rural Alaska communities to have control over who comes and goes. The more we can put this as a local decision, the better. And that was our communication to the governor to to make this a, a local level a decision, or at least to allow local governments to, if the state sets a baseline, then local governments can restrict beyond that. Villages cannot restrict law enforcement, first responders, or social workers. As of Tuesday night, Alaska had 133 confirmed COVID-19 cases. First Nations advocates in Manitoba are seeking assistance from Canadian police, armed forces, and the province to screen visitors at checkpoints to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the CBC reports. Advocates representing 26 First Nations communities in northern Manitoba say many First Nations have set up roadblocks to stop visitors and are requiring community members who've left to self-isolate upon return. The provincial government has also set up checkpoints at borders. Meanwhile, many First Nations leaders across Canada say their communities are at greater risk due to lack of access to health care, clean drinking water, and overcrowded housing. The Canadian government recently announced more than $300 million for Indigenous COVID-19 support. April 1st is Census Day in the U.S., COVID-19 has changed census outreach as people across the country follow self-isolation and social distancing orders, but there are still efforts to get the count, including in tribal communities. Jamie Gloche is with New Mexico's Native Census Coalition. She says before the coronavirus, much work was put in place to count Native people in the state. None of us foresaw this coming and Um, We've done a lot of community engagement work, a lot of outreach work. We've established complete count committees in the tribal areas as well as in the urban spaces that was heavily reliant on making sure we do outreach and education in community. Um, But now we can no longer do that, so we're pivoting, moving back to, like, making sure our community has access and understanding for how to respond, um, what's in the questionnaire, And now more than ever, the census is actually easier to respond. Census groups want to keep the momentum going and say even a slight undercount could impact health care, housing, education, and other services for Native Americans. In mid-March, the U.S. Census Bureau started inviting households across the country to complete the 2020 census online, by phone, or by mail. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by AARP CommunityConnections.org that connects you to help in your community and enables you to join or organize your own online mutual aid group, share ideas, and help your family, neighbors, and those most affected by COVID-19. Support for law and justice-related programming provided by Hobbs, Strauss, Dean, and Walker, LLP, a national law firm dedicated to promoting and defending tribal rights for more than 30 years. More information available at HobbsStrauss.com. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.